Man, it's time for the Tar Heels to end multiple losing streaks this week. Can they do it against Jeff Collins' former team? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Friday, October 11th, 2024. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast. It's the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shea, joined by our guy, Denora Cersei. We're sitting here at halftime of Thursday Night Football. It's perfect timing to hop on and record this to get ready for the weekend. And you're joining us at the place to get your Tar Heels content every single day. It's all part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch. Special shout out to our everydayers, the Locked on Tar Heels Discord community, and of course, our great Locked on Tar Heels insiders. Let's get into it. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Okay, coming up on the show today, we're going to get ready for Georgia Tech coming into Keenan on Saturday. We'll have our what to watch for. We'll have our key matchups. We're going to talk a little bit about our game predictions, blue-white scrimmage coming up, and of course our weekend whip around so that you know what else is going on in Carolina athletics this weekend. Sir, starting off, yeah. losing streaks, my man. Tar Heels are on a current three-game losing streak. Both this season and to Georgia Tech, not to mention that they've lost five of the last six to Georgia Tech. I don't understand it, and I can't fathom it. It's not even the Paul Johnson era. It's our hometown team beating right. up on the Tar Heels. How on earth is Matt Brown's team going to flip this around on Saturday? Hey, man, again, they still searching for that one complete game between everybody so on all three phases so man this got to be this, they got to overcome man they, they've been losing losing the past three games the games they've been in they've been in all of them you know what i'm saying even even the pit game this past homecoming they was up i mean they went up they was tied 17 17 going in at the half so you would think coming out you know what i'm saying we'll be they'll put up you know a more of a, not necessarily more of a fighting chance the game i, I figured the game would be still a lot closer than what it turned out being but um, they definitely got to put it together, man. Still bad. One, we didn't get a, a punt block, but it was still like <laughs> we didn't. Yeah. We, we didn't. We didn't. But it was, it was like you know the punters of what they weren't comfortable. They were rushing kicks, so it wasn't really really being able to flip the field like we yeah. like we needed to. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, a couple of they drive stall early. We got the uh, the great interception. And return by Caleb Cause for a touchdown. Like we, we we needed that as a defense. We need to score on defense to help our offense as well. I mean, not that our offense has uh trouble scoring all uh trouble scoring all the time, but still when we're able to add points as uh from the defensive side, it's it helps uh the outcome of the team um overall win and whatnot. So we we gotta get more of those as well. It was good to see that, but but we need more coming up and against Georgia Tech, who we ain't beat in the past. Oh my God! Five out of six is insane. So we need, we got to find a way to overcome for sure. It's bad juju. We got to fix this juju, sirs. And I don't I don't know what we got to do, but uh, it needs to happen. Maybe I'll wear like a, a Braves hat or something during the game just to reverse jinx <laughs> the Yellow Jackets. I don't I don't know what we're gonna do. And you know, you mentioned that pick six from Cost, and part of part of the thing we've been talking about, sirs, is this idea that so many of the teams in the ACC are very, very similar in terms of not necessarily playing style, but like level of capability and who they are as a team. You know, I think at this point we look and maybe Miami's a little bit of a step ahead, although they've looked vulnerable the past couple of weeks. Clemson mm -hmm. seems to be coming okay. into their own a little bit after that opening loss to Georgia. Outside of that, one of the things we've been saying is you look at this schedule and you feel like there's no obvious wins and there's no obvious losses, meaning, in my opinion, You've got to have plays like that pick six to put you in prime position. And you and I were talking before we started recording that we thought that was going to be enough last Saturday. Like, that's the play. That's the thing. And it, it just wasn't. So, right. Sirs, what's missing there to add up to the little things that make a big difference? 
Uh, like you said, the little things. We they still have it was some costly penalties that kept drives going. They that stalled drives on both sides of the ball. Um, not being able to be consistent on both sides of the ball, whereas uh, consistent runs and consistent uh, styles of stopping the run, explosive plays, still giving up explosive plays on defense. Yes, you gotta you gotta tone those down, man. You just, it's hard to it's hard to uh, convey a team and and keep a team uh, from scoring when you're giving up explosive plays and giving them more and more opportunities to get the ball in the end zone. Because it was times when we had them on third downs, it made it where we've been third and five or third and five to seven or uh the, the third is the third and third and shorts are more harder to stop sure for sure but 35 37 you gotta be able to get off the field or you gotta keep them at 35 37 you can't allow them to get into fourth and short now because now they go for it. Teams yeah. are going for it so you gotta keep them if you got them 35 37 plus you gotta keep them there you can't let them convert uh, for sure, you can't let them convert the third down for sure, but you can't let them get in fourth and manageable these days. Yeah. And oh, by the way, if you're Carolina and you're in that fourth and short, you got to convert. The Tar Heels were two of six on Saturday. Yeah, man. Oh, my twice, God. twice right down there in the shadow of the end zone, yep. man. It was, yep. it was in the red good. zone for sure. You got to, you got, we got to come away with points in the red zone. Obviously, another big storyline in this game is both Jeff Collins and Nate McCollum going back up against their former team for Jeff Collins. Three years and parts of a fourth year before uh, Coach Key took over. Uh, succeeded Paul Johnson, so that's a tough transition. It's pre-transfer portal. It's hard to transition out of that uh, spread. Uh, excuse me, that triple. Uh, good grief. Uh, you know, the Paul Johnson offense. And, like, that. that's where that was. And, um, like, for Coach Collins, never won more than three games uh, in his Georgia Tech tenure, Nate McCollum played three years at Georgia Tech, and now obviously both are Tar Heels. What right. you know, sir, for you, obviously, like we'll get into the what Jeff Collins needs to do with the defense later in our what to watch for, obviously. But just what what are those thoughts and emotions you imagine going through their brains tonight on Friday night as they get ready for this? Um, uh, I would I could imagine uh, some emotions flying through there, especially like uh, in Nate McCollum's situation, kind of like George Petaway. Did. Coming in the day before playing Carolina, guys you went to war with, guys you worked out with, seen every day. Um, George, now George wasn't at North Carolina as long as Nate was at Georgia Tech, so there's a lot of uh, people that he's going back to see. Uh, well, that we're not going back; they're coming here, so they're coming to see him. So um, it's going to be some mixed mixed feelings. People that he's he's worked out with, trained with, blood, sweat, and tears with, played seasons with. Um, he played. With Georgia Tech against Carolina, now he's with Carolina playing against Georgia Tech, so that's a major, that's a major twist, right? So, so that's 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 kind of crazy, but um, but I, I imagine like he would want to he would want to do good against his teammates, uh, guys he played been there with, may have came in with during the recruiting process, but he want to put on a good show. I mean, anytime you want to play against a former team, no matter what it is, uh, you want to. You want to show like what they what they missing, and you want to you want to be able to like perform. Well, hopefully they will, and we'll we'll talk about Nate McCollum later as well, who had a big old breakout last week, yeah, sure. and uh, need need more of that, please, sir uh, McCollum. Also, I'm still trying to figure out why I could not think of the words triple and option, and then put them together in one phrase. But uh, there we are, sirs. Now, <laughs> uh, look, one of the key matchups in this game is Omarion Hampton up against the Georgia Tech rush defense. Let me give you some numbers, Sirs, and then uh, you just tell us what you're looking for with this. Omarion Hampton, fifth in the nation coming into the weekend in rush yards per game, 127.3. He has at least 100 rushing yards in every game that he's finished. Obviously, the Charlotte game got banged up a bit, wasn't able to finish that game. On the right. Georgia Tech side of things, they are 10th nationally in rush defense allowing only 87 and a half yards a game and no running back no individual running back has rushed for 100 yards against them this season mm. when uh push comes to shove when a hard thing in a rock place or whatever that phrase is comes up against each other this weekend sirs what's going to happen hey man if, if, I, if my friend is able to move that line and dominate a lot of scrimmage tomorrow is going to still have a big day but with that with the defensive line not giving up 100 yards to a uh, 100 yards to a single running back yet they're they gonna have some pride in that, and then knowing that they're gonna have the confidence from years past of being Carolina, they're gonna come ready to play, man. So we got to be able to 
we got to be able to show them that, you know, like we control this, we control the line of scrimmage, and we could we could run against y'all. You got to be able to move a man against his will, and it's mm-hmm. going to be one of the weeks to prove it, uh, especially with one of the uh, best backs in the nation. You got to be able to run the ball and uh, give, help give uh, Jacoby some time back there in that pocket. So, people, you know, make it easy on the passing game. You know, people can't stack – people try to stack the box top of Mario, and if he's – Having success toting the ball is gonna open up the passing game like always, and it works both both hand to hand. Man, it's got to make it happen. Uh, offensive line gave up one sack last week. That was on the last meaningful play of the game, and so we'll see if they can continue to hold up in that regard. Now we got to get to our what to watch for four things that Cirs and I have for you to be paying attention to as you watch this game. If you can find the CW Network, that is tomorrow at noon Eastern. We'll get to that in just a second. Right after I tell you about Zbiotics, which is a pre-alcohol probiotic drink and is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. It's that byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for the rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break down that byproduct. Just remember to make Zbiotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Here's how to use it. Number step one, drink pre-alcohol. For best results, make it your first drink of the night. Step two, drink responsibly. Pace yourself, hydrate, and get a good night's sleep. And then step three, enjoy tomorrow. Wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. So go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and Get 15% off your first order when you use Locked On College at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. If you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So remember, head on over to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college at checkout for 15% off. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. That's guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. And look, right now, FanDuel, we're a little bit sad because the Tar Heels are four-and-a-half-point underdogs against Georgia Tech tomorrow. It started off five-and-a-half. That line has now moved, but still. If you think Carolina can, at the very least, cover that, go get in on that action at FanDuel.com. It's America's number one sports book. It's time for the what to watch for, where Cerse and I give you four things to be on the lookout for tomorrow in this game that you can be just, you know, a little bit more informed as a fan of like, man, if these things go right for Carolina, they will put themselves in a good position to win. My man, Cerse, kick it off. All right. First one on the schedule, uh, what to watch for will be, would Rucker be more of an impact in this, in this second game coming up? I would say I hope so, man. Especially being that coming back at the first game, he was mostly used on third downs, but it was a couple of crucial third downs we could have used him. Like uh, like you mentioned earlier, he wasn't out there, but um, I would I would say they had him on pitch count. Like he didn't want to rush him back by missing because he missed the last three, so you don't want to gas him out. But uh, I think with another full week of practice of going and getting more reps, he's getting more and more back in the game shape. So I'm pretty sure he'll be out there. If, if he's on the pitch count again, I'm pretty sure he'll be out there on more third downs uh, for sure this game than he was uh, against uh, Pitt. And that is much needed. Yeah, it was. It was weird to me that in crucial third downs late in the game, sir, that, that he wasn't. What, like, do you think that strictly, I, and I'm, I'm asking you to guess here, is that strictly a pitch count thing? Is it like, hey, uh, you know, it's crucial moments. We, we're, you're not fully back yet. We just don't want to risk it. What what would lead to him, like, not being out there in those late games? It probably was a mixture of both. They probably, okay. you know, they, he, probably was, he probably was in for a certain amount of plays at that time. And then they knew he was he was at his limit or over his limit, and they didn't want to risk him. So yes, it probably it could have been could have been a situation where it's still a long season. We need you. Yeah, we got to go with what we have right now. Like we already promised you this amount of snaps, this or this percentages of the snaps for the game. And once we reach that, they it probably was a guarantee that they couldn't go over that. So yeah. you never know. Um, but yeah, I, I look forward to him being out there more for sure in this next game because. Um, we got to be able to apply some more pressure on a 
on a QB, so we won't give up as many uh, big plays down the field. Yeah. For sure. yeah, man. Haynes King got to keep him in check for sure, and Rucker would be key. Right. In that we'll see, you know, I'm one of the things I'm always watching. I, I kind of as the starters come out on both sides of the ball, I go through and check everybody and send it through the locked on Tar Heels Discord. And when I saw uh, that we did not have Cayman Rucker out there at the beginning of the game, you knew it was uh, going to be kind oh, yeah. of a, a getting back up to speed. Number two in our what to watch for was last week the reemergence of Nate McCollum. It was his third highest single game total of his career. 128 kept, uh, receiving yards, excuse me, had games of 165 and 135 last year. It was the second most catches he had had in a game in his career. 10 had 15 last year in that 165 yard game. Look, with, I just got to say it kind of bluntly here, sir. JJ Jones, I don't feel like has been like he's been solid, but there have been plays he's not been able to make. He's not been. Like we've just Carolina has needed somebody to be that dude. Nobody has really consistently been that dude. And maybe last week was Nate McCollum's opportunity to do so. It feels to me watching like he and Chriswell have a little bit of a connection here. Really curious to see how that goes this week, especially against his former team. Oh uh, yeah. Especially I'm looking forward to evolve this week. Especially I know they want to get they go they I'd be surprised if they don't get Nate as much as Vol. In this game plan, would it be against being against Georgia Tech? I mean, I know we want to get the win, but you got to get him more involved so he can be able to um, do. It's going to be like I said, it's a emotional game for him, so they want to be able to, you know, feed those emotions and let him play, and have a good game. But we also need other guys to step up and like JJ Jones is a guy that for sure needs to come on with it. Uh, he had a he had a chance at one early in the game on a D ball. He tried to pull in, but he kind of. He, it was a drop. I guess he was trying to concentrate on getting his feet in the bounds sure. and whatnot because it was a tight squeeze for sure. But those type of plays that are that are separate him from from the rest of the receivers and they just show the rest of the receivers that he's the leader of the pack. Because um, we still are going to need him down the stretch of the of the season. He's going to. Um, I expect him to come up big later on if he just keep coming with and just keep working. But he got to keep uh, gaining his confidence and the more targets he gets, I believe it it will happen. And um, like you said, Jacoby and, and um, Nate having a good chemistry. That's pretty. That's pretty good considering like Jacoby also has a good chemistry with the tight ends because he be feeding them as well, and they've been they've been balling. So yeah. Uh, so so we'll see. The more the more uh, relationships he have with other guys, man, there's more people that get involved, yeah. and more people uh, showcase their skills, and that offense can take off real good. It takes some pressure off of Marion too, and the, right. on the back end if they can. They could throw it, throw it, and let him rest. And then when it's time to run them, let him run. Get it. That's right. Absolutely, that's correct. All right, sir. So why don't you get us to point number three? Um, uh, mine is also a key match. Uh, with, how will Coach Colin be able to draw up pressure against his former team? That's gonna be tough because they got a they got an athletic quarterback that can move around, man. Like. <laughs> Hey, those presses, those presses, hey man, those those mobile quarterbacks, man, they um they make it hard on or even on the pressure. So you know, we gotta see. We gotta see. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be creative. They he says it's not a grudge match game, but he's I know he wants to get that win. He wasn't able to win as much when he was there. And of course he was able to beat us for some reason. So he should have had an antidote to beat Georgia Tech if he was able to beat us for sure at the time he faced us. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how he will how he's going to call it the defense against that, uh, his former team. Yeah, and and I think that goes really nicely hand in hand with the rucker of it all. You know, of of uh, us waiting to see how many uh, snaps he's able to play, um, continuing to keep guys fresh because they got to get after it. What what kind of spying situation will we have on Haynes King? All of that uh, we will right. be watching for. Absolutely, being able to use worker more. Yeah. Man, uh, for what to watch for point number four, I'm going to go back to the offense. And it's funny because it goes hand in hand with my Nate McCollum question is just plain and simple. Jacoby Criswell has to complete more passes this season, completing yeah. just 56.4% of his passes, 88 of 156. And it's not just a season yeah. thing. It's game to game. Sirs has other than the Charlotte game where he threw one pass and completed it. No game. Has he been over 60%? The four games uh, since, 60.9%, 58.3%, 53.8%, 53.3%. Literally every game has gone down in completion percentage, Denora Cersei. Some of this, I think, is touch. 
Some of it, I think, is is finding the guys at the right time and in the right place. Some of it is guys right. got to make catches. I mean, that is part of it. Let's not uh, let's not forget that. But this is a thing, and this completion percentage has to come up to to do what you were talking about of helping spell Omarion Hampton. What do you see in there from Chriswell? Uh, like you said, that's why, that's why I said relationships are going to be a big part of this. The more relationships we find with receivers, the more we be able to complete them more. And uh, spread the ball out. We got to get those completion rates up, man. That's that's bad. We need more. And that, like I said, that also continue to help out Amarion because teams have to lighten the box to cover our guys on the outside. That he has more holes where he can hit it up in and run and run good. Um, he's coming up on the all time record for Carolina running backs and whatnot. So as long as he he keep having the success he's having on the ground. Um, he has a good chance of being an all-time leader rusher, and that would only that would only help if we're able to spread the ball around and make plays on the, uh, when the ball's in the air and getting the balls in our best playmakers' hands. All right, so this game tomorrow, Saturday, October twelfth, Carolina hosting Georgia Tech at Keenan noon kick on the CW. Good luck getting there. It's like true TV during March Madness. Can I find it? Uh, FanDuel, as we said, has this line: Georgia Tech minus four and a half, and the over under set at fifty nine and a half. Sirs, before we give game predictions, yes or no, will Omarion Hampton be the first 100-yard rusher against Georgia Tech this season? Yes. Yes. Agreed. I believe Easy. so. Easy. Let's go. Let's go, Big O. Let's go, Big O. Make sure to get some Bullet Goss in there, some Caleb Hood back in action last week. That was good to see. Yeah, absolutely. Right. absolutely. And uh, we'll see. And, and obviously, we're watching out to get Barlow out there, man. Poor guy. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. Sirs, game predictions, Georgia Tech, four and a half. Can Carolina not only cover this, but maybe win it outright? What do you think? Break the streak or no? Oh, we got to break the streak. I'm going, I'm going 35-17 North Carolina. Okay. Um, I am feeling less confident. I do think this is the week <laughs> that Carolina breaks their current season losing streak and their Georgia Tech losing streak. But I'm going to give it 28-24. So Carolina uh, wins this outright. The the line doesn't matter because Carolina is the underdog. Just got to be within four and a half to cover. And let's see, 28-24 is not. Uh, we'll so that hits the under. So I'm, we'll I'm going see. with that. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Hopefully, man, this thing will play out. Now, here's what's fun. It's almost basketball time. And 45 minutes after this football game ends, we will have the blue-white scrimmage, a return to the days of yore. It's been over two decades since we've seen this. We'll talk about that and get you ready with the weekend whip around all coming up in just a second. Right after, I'll tell you about Robin Hood. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1% because Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here now with Robin Hood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing does involve risk and rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Okay, gang, tomorrow is your first opportunity this season to see Carolina publicly in action. The basketball team, the blue-white scrimmage, 45 minutes after the football game ends. You have an opportunity to head down the hill to the Smith Center and go watch this thing. Uh, tickets are $10 general admission. You can get in and go get there. Uh, you don't need an extra parking pass. If, if you're already parked for the football game, that's good and honored for the day. Carolina suggests, though, that if you're don't, uh, if you not already parked, that you do the park ride share thing and get in that way. Unfortunately, if you're not able to be in attendance, Carolina confirmed this on Thursday, there will be no coverage either on TV streaming or audio. Um, in fact, Adam Lucas just put out some of the some of the details in a write up for Carolina. Uh, and the question is, will there be Tar Heel Sports Network coverage of the Blue White game? The answer: No. The THSN crew and affiliates will be busy wrapping up post game coverage of the game against the Yellow Jackets. What about a live stream? No. There are a variety of 
excuse me, logistical reasons, starting with the fact that the same production space and personnel needed to produce a live stream will be used for the Keenan Stadium video board and Smith Center video board on Saturday. So basically, logistical and personnel overlap is going to stop this from being able to be covered. Now, here's what's neat. For those who might not be aware and might not remember, this used to be a regular occurrence. After a home football game, go down the hill, see Carolina blue-white scrimmage, and just make a Saturday of it. Sir, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think this is an awesome return to do this. I know it's the unfortunate result of Hurricane Helene and, and what it caused there in Cherokee and, and Carolina having to move this, but I think this is going to be a really neat thing with proceeds going to benefit people affected by the hurricane. What, what do you like about this football basketball doubleheader? Uh, I like it. Like you said, it's for especially for it's beneficial wise. It's for a good a good cause. We're donating a cause to hurricane relief. So I mean, I like it. I I remember being being um at the games where they would leave to go to late night at Roy. You know what I'm saying? You would see them leaving the kids. You know, see the students leaving out of the student section around about the fourth quarter of the game. You knew where they was headed. You know, what I'm saying a lot of times we would we would head there too, and we didn't have anything else planned at the home game. So. I mean, get to enjoy the full ultimate college experience. And then, it's, like I said, it's a double header, it's a twofer. Um, and all the, like I said, all the proceeds is going towards a good cause. So people should really be uh, glad about that and be be, uh, be had, happy to be involved with giving back. And that's well said. Now, as a reminder, you have another chance to see Carolina on Tuesday in Memphis uh, on ESPNU. This one will be covered on TV. And so check it out as Carolina plays a charity exhibition against. Penny Hardaway's Tigers, man. Penny was the dude when we were coming up through middle school and uh, high school. Everybody's rocking them pennies in South Side of Atlanta where I lived, and it was awesome. All right. Certs, uh, just a quick basketball recruiting update. Nico Gundalo, who was on campus for a visit last week, has released his Final Four. It's Michigan State, Ohio State, UConn, and those Tar Heels, baby. So he's a 6'11 power forward. Uh, My thought is this. Nico. Go watch all the Brady Manic highlights you can find, and then you will know the play. It is clear and obvious what you can do as a stretch four in this offense and this team. Man, forget the reigning national champion. Forget those Big Ten bums in Michigan State who we beat up on all the time. And Ohio State, you know the play. Come to Carolina. All right. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Weekend whip around, sirs. We've got men's soccer, women's soccer, field hockey, and volleyball all in action cross country is off men's soccer team won midweek three to nothing against charleston they play tonight at notre dame 7 p.m on acc network extra okay Woof. after that loss at clemson last week the guys uh fell to seventh but still man top 10 in the nation seven one and three overall three and one in acc play um sirs the women's soccer team is out on the west coast right now tonight or thursday as we record this playing at number 17 cal uh, that started at 7 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to go check that score here in just a second so we can update everyone and then stay on the West Coast to play number seven, Stanford, on Sunday. That's a top 10 matchup. That'll be at 4 p.m. on ACC Network Extra. Uh, the ladies are up to number two in the nation right now, so that should be a great matchup. So it's, how, man, big game. Again, just remind everyone how important it is to have all of these Carolina teams ranked so high nationally and why that's a big deal on campus it's bragging rights we, we um they, we, sh- we can show everybody that we're not just in the one or two sports it's not a, just all about you know football and basketball we all around baseball soccer uh like you said field hockey uh it's uh men's and women's soccer so man we we bet we best all around college man i love it go tar heels speaking of go tar heels Carolina beat Cal tonight one to nothing. A Bella yeah, Silver penalty see? kick. Oh, in the 80, like 89 49. So this game was almost over. Bella Sember gives yeah. Carolina the victory on the West Coast. There you go Ooh. here. Go here. Man, that's big time. All right. So they need to now follow that up by winning this top 10 matchup at Stanford that's on Stanford. Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, that's big time. All right, field yeah. hockey, number one in the nation, 8-0 overall, 3-0 in the ACC. At Louisville today, 3 p.m. on ACC Network Extra. And Sunday noon, There's it's at App State. I don't know if they're going to be able to play in Boone. I know that 
Uh, App State has played some games, I think, in Charlotte, maybe. So uh, if you're thinking about heading to that game, maybe just check out, double check where it's actually going to take place. Yeah, so be careful for sure. Man, no, no good there. And then volleyball continues, hopefully, their strong start to the season, beating Duke twice last week. This weekend, it's the rest of the North Carolina ACC teams at State tonight, 7 Eastern on ACC Network Extra, and at Wake Forest uh, at, on Sunday at 3.30, also on ACC Network Extra. Okay, I got to look at this schedule. Man, Sirs, uh, they could go, if they win both of these, that would be 4-0 and against the other ACC opponents in the state of North Carolina. And I know it's so much bigger than just like, Winning the the all right, you know, still you know, bragging rights over the state. Good grief, got to make that happen. So again, yeah. the ladies have been playing so well, twelve and one on the season, four and zero oh in the ACC, and they're on an eight game winning streak right now. Man, it's just great to see. So uh, unfortunately, though, y'all, as you heard us say here, most if not all of this action is out of town. Yeah, men's soccer's yeah. at Notre Dame, women's soccer's on the West Coast, field hockey's at Louisville. And yeah, volleyball um, at NC State. So I guess you could go to Raleigh, man. Go check out the volleyball team. Right, or right. obviously stay at home Saturday for the football basketball doubleheader. Ready for the game. Yep. Football basketball doubleheader. All right, sirs. We got to get this dub tomorrow. It needs to happen. Time to break the curse. Uh go where you go. Do what you do, yeah. folks. In the words of Woody Durham, make this thing happen. happen. Okay. If you're not subscribed to our show already on video and audio, make sure you do that. Hit that bell notification on YouTube so you get notified when we go live after a game, whether that's the Georgia Tech game tomorrow or after the Memphis game on Tuesday. We'll go live postcast on both of those. going to be a fun run of stuff there. If you're not part of the Locked on Tar Heels Discord, man, it's a great time to do it as these seasons are taken off. Free to join the links in the show notes, and you can also join the Locked on Tar Heels Insider Program to go deeper and get direct access to me. That link is also in the show notes. You guys, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Yeah. We'll talk again tomorrow, but until then, sirs, tell them. Peace.